So I asked you to read uh, a chapter from an, an amazing book written by Jeff Chang. Jeff Chang is a really dope um, author, activist. He um, was involved in Soul Slides, which is like Black Alicious um, and Quantum and um, you know Lyrics Born and that sort of stuff out of the Bay Area. So he's a hip hop like head. Um, and he's written a bunch of other books like We Gonna Be All Right and you know, books that look at like race in America, representation in America. And he wrote this great book called Can't, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And we read a few chapters out of it. So you, know, you have to understand, just to kind of preface this, um, if any of y'all have been to New York City, New York City, as you see it now, as this pretty like glossy, place was not like that in, in, in the 60s. In fact, it wasn't like that in the 80s. It wasn't like that in most of the 90s. A lot of the places where you probably have been in New York City, even if it was like Manhattan um, or Harlem, those were very different places in the 60s and 70s. I mean, Google like images of downtown Manhattan, 1960s, and it's largely um, adult cinemas, a lot of prostitution. I mean, it's just so, just so different than it is now. It's not, it wasn't the tourist epicenter. And if you can ex imagine that and then kind of expand that to a lot of the other places in New York City, like Harlem, uh, the South Bronx and Bronx, uh, you know, uh, Brooklyn specifically, um, these places were incredibly different. Um, run down, I mean, just basically um, ignored. And it all had to do with a lot of racialized uh, urban, urban planning, which we'll talk about now. But, you know, the South Bronx itself and New York City, you know, uh, was largely an industrial city. Uh, warehouses, manufacturing, production, et cetera, like a lot of American cities were, you know, up until the 60s, the 70s where you start to see um, you know, that type of labor, manufacturing labor move, move, move overseas. Um, and um, so what starts to happen is, is as New York starts to deindustrialize itself, where it becomes less about producing goods that are exported, um, there's just a lot of people that are unemployed. There's a lot of jobs that, that are lost and, and that are gone. And so you have a, a very ridiculous unemployment rate. Almost, you know, more than half of the people, specifically in the South Bronx, um, in the Bronx, were un unemployed. Now, if you look at the youth rate, that was up to 60 to 80 percent. So you had a, a lot of people, you know, that were str really struggling and there wasn't a lot of resources in, in, in this specific area. Okay, um, but you know, we lost, you know, in that area in the 60s, you know, upwards of a half million plus manufacturing jobs and probably more and more. And all of the um, ancillary jobs that deal with manufacturing, delivery, you know, um, assembly, you know, whatever, shipping, all these, all these different things. Okay, um, so that gives you a little bit of sense of, you know, New York City was just really. There wasn't a lot of work there, um, you know, and the work was very different, not like it is now where it's a lot of production of ideas, um, advertising, TV, stuff like that. Now, there was a great uh, plan for urban renewal, um, and we'll talk about this guy, Robert Moses. He was an urban planner in New York City um, who was very problematic and very, very, very powerful. And... What you start happening, you know, if you read in Jeff Chang's book, you know, what you start ha ha have happening is they decide they're going to, as urban planners, um, renew Manhattan. Uh, this meant displacement. And what, you know, urban renewal, you know, gentrification, if, you know, you want to call it that, you can, all that works. And gentrification as a, as a word, you know, as a term, as a concept, as a, a practice, you know, depending on where you are in the gentrifying depends on how you feel about it. If you're a developer and you, you gentrify a, a neighborhood that is a historically, you know, often a marginalized, you know, racial or ethnic marginalized group, um, often uh, economically marginalized as well, 
um, you know, lower, lower class, working class, working poor neighborhoods. Um, and you start buying property in, in those places and building boutique pickle stores and yoga, um, yoga studios and high rise apartments. You know, there's a displacement there. There's a negative effect on the people from, from you know, historically from that area. And um, so what starts happening in, in Manhattan is they start basically pushing out the poor. Um, and these poor people are often, um, you know, Puerto Rican families, uh, you know, Afro-Cuban families, a lot of uh, Caribbean fam you know, uh, families from the Caribbean diaspora, from Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Bahamas, you know, Cuba, uh, Dominican Republic, etc. And they start moving these 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 families and. What they also start doing is moving them into the South Bronx. They start creating, um, you know, housing projects. And these are called towers in a park. And, you know, you, you can see they're basically like these four, five, six, whatever, big concrete, almost sort of prison looking um, high rises where everything is the same. And, and the concept, you know, the people, you know, that developing these said it was good, you know, it was affordable housing, but this is where they, they pushed um, a lot of, you know, a lot of these, you know, black families, a lot of these Puerto Rican families. Um, they started to push them to, to, to these projects. Um, they also started to push um, these people, if not into the projects, into these you know, these neighborhoods um, in the South Bronx and Bronx that were, you know, historically um, Irish, historically Jewish, etc. And then what you start to have happening there as well is those families, those Jewish and Italian and Irish families start to move um, to the suburbs of Queens, which is another borough of New York City. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more um, about, about this. But the, the, you know, the, the urban planners start moving all these families to the South Bronx from, from Manhattan, often poor, often black or brown, uh, into, into these neighborhoods, okay? Or these housing projects, which, which are littered throughout the, the, South, the South Bronx. Um, and, you know, you have to understand, you have to fucking understand that, like, New York City was just so, so different. They were on the verge of bankruptcy, literally, like, financial bankruptcy, like having to claim bankruptcy, okay? Um, politically and morally totally fucking corrupt, like totally just like total corruption, um, you know, from the police, you know, mayor, city officials, urban planners, all, all that stuff. So it was just really a different, different place. Um, and uh, so if we look at a map, and just to give you a sense too, so we have kind of a sense of like the economics, a, a little bit of what was going on and, and movement of bodies, um, you know, around the city. It was very, it was very, uh, it was planned. I mean, obviously, right? It was planned to move these, po these populations and to do certain things for other populations um, in Manhattan, right? If you, you know, if you've been to Manhattan, you can kind of get a sense of that. 